uh, in this session we want to talk about survey methods and communicating with respondents. Now it's a, a fairly long class so uh, feel free to stop the class at any time, make your own notes, do some research based on the notes and return to it and pick it up from there. You'll note in the bottom right hand side of the slide the slide number is indicated so you'll know exactly where you got to should you want to stop the video and have a break or make some notes or whatever you want to do. So let's start. Um, first of all we're going to talk about communications and the research process. Now the first thing we need to do here is to carefully compose the measurement questions. What are we going to question? What information do we require? And the information that is required should be posed as questions and these should be very carefully worded and set out. It's also necessary to have the sampling issues uh, resolved. In other words, what sort of sampling method will be used, how will the sample be selected, what size will the sample be, and what callback procedures will be in place in the event of missing somebody who was going to be interviewed, let's say. How will the that person be contacted and finally interviewed? Now bear in mind here that sampling is only used as really a money-saving exercise. The, the best way to have information is to ask the whole population, whatever the relevant population is. So if we were doing a, a survey of student spending habits, we might want to talk to all the students in the country. But of course that's very expensive and very complicated, very uh, logistically very, very difficult to do. So what we would do instead is take a sample of students and how we draw up that sample is important, the sampling method, how it's selected, um, how many students we should ask, and they should be representative, of course, of the whole population of students. So issues surrounding sampling must be addressed and effectively communicated. The sampling instrument um, attempt to minimize errors and create respondent screening procedures. So with the sampling instrument, let's say it's a survey, the document should be free from errors. It should be piloted, it should be tested and it should be checked so that when it finally is used to collect the information that's required, it's error free. There are no errors still in the document. So all the questions are relevant, they're all clear, and the respondent is clear about what has been asked. And related to this, of course, the interviews, the interviewers should be properly trained. In the event of uh, a respondent being confused by a question, the interviewer should be clearly briefed on what to do. So the interviewer should be trained in the use of that interview and of the interviewing instrument. So let's say the survey or the uh, open-ended questions that are going to be used or the scales, if it's an attitude uh, issue, what scales will measure the attitude of the person towards something or in relationship to something. So the interviewer should be trained, that's the point. And finally, what are the data collection procedures? Um, how are they going to be implemented? The data collection procedures may be to contact the people by letter or by email, or it could be going to their house, to their home and asking them, going to their workplace if that's permitted. So what are the procedures? and how long will the interview take and <coughs> what sort of <coughs> excuse me what sort of questions will be asked uh, in other words 
how will the questions be asked? The questions may be asked in a variety of ways. Uh, they may be, it may be a very friendly exercise, or it might be quite formal. It depends on the nature of the survey. If the, if the survey is about something very serious, then the interviewer will not be light-hearted and joking. So, part of the interviewer's training will be uh, to deal with the data collection procedures. Now let's look at personal interviews. Well, what are the requirements for success with a personal interview? First of all, the respondent must possess the required information. The person you're asking must have the information that is required. If you're doing a survey of uh, people's attitudes towards climbing high mountains, then it's important that the person you're speaking to must have climbed high mountains. They must have some information. They must have the relevant information. If you're talking to somebody about their uh, about procedures in managing fish stocks, then they must know about fish stocks. They must know about conservation. They must know about fishing and all aspects of that industry. They must have the relevant information. In other words, a personal interview is only effective if the person being interviewed knows about the topic. And the respondent must understand his or her role. The respondent must know that they are being interviewed and that the answers they give should be serious. They should be considered answers, not flippant answers or light-hearted answers. These should be carefully considered answers because it's important. And the respondent should be motivated to cooperate in the interview. Uh, they should want to cooperate. If, if, um, if they're not motivated to cooperate, they may give erroneous answers. They may give false answers. They may just give the first thing that comes into their head as an answer. It may not be considered. So if they're motivated, they will want to give good, reliable answers. Answers which are true and are considered and are reasonable. Now, the respondent's motivation to participate will depend on the belief that the experience will be pleasant and satisfying. So the respondent's motivation to participate will be based on a belief that the experience of participating in the interview will be pleasant and satisfying. It won't upset them. It won't annoy them. It will be a pleasant experience. They should also have the belief that answering the survey is an important and worthwhile use of their time. They must value the time spent in answering the questions and consider that time well spent. It must be, it must be seen by them as a useful activity. They're not wasting their time. And if they have any reservations, they must be carefully allayed to one side. They must be dealt with. Any reservations about participating should be cleared up. The interviewer should have the training necessary to communicate the purpose of the interview, roughly what's going to happen during the interview, how long it will take, and ensure that the respondent is happy to participate. Now, the interview. Well, first of all, there should be an introduction to the interview. And in the introduction, there should be a good relationship established between the respondent and the interviewer. Then the data should be gathered. And there should be probing. If, if any questions are possible yes or no, then perhaps some probing questions 
may be used. But these would be sorted out before the interview and the interviewer will have those probing questions to hand. So a probing question is prompting the respondent to go a little deeper and to make a decision between perhaps conflicting opinions. So probing means going a little deeper so they're gathering the data in the interview if the respondent's a little ambivalent perhaps a little probing is useful. It's necessary to record the interview. This may be done by writing down <coughs> accurately uh, what has transpired during the interview. So recording the interview is important. It's a record of what's happened. And then to thank the respondent. Being polite. Thank the respondent and uh, end the interview in a, an amiable fashion. Now the probing styles I mentioned earlier, well these help with understanding and interest. So probing means uh, asking questions not central to the interview, perhaps on the periphery, related questions, but it's just helping the respondent to understand what the question is. Helping the respondent to understand the question and to generate interest in the question or to uh, stimulate interest in the question. It's important that the questions are delivered in a well-spaced manner. They're not all rushed. That there is good pace to the questions that are being asked. One after the other they are delivered uh, not in a rushed fashion, in a, a gentle, easy, straightforward manner. It's important to repeat and explain any questions if that's required. The explanation should also be well rehearsed beforehand. If there is a question about the question, then the interviewer should be fully trained on how to explain the question and perhaps put it into different words if that's what's required. It's a good idea to repeat the respondent's reply to ensure clear understanding. So when the respondent gives an answer the interviewer could repeat the answer whilst writing it down and that way the respondent is uh, aware that the answer given is what has been recorded. And also, of course, the interviewer is reinforcing the answer, making sure that, that is exactly what is meant. Now, problems with interviews, well, the big, res the big problem is non-response error. Sometimes uh, if people are selected <coughs> for interview, perhaps they may not respond. And it depends really on the instrument that's been used. If people go to the house, they may get a response. It may be that people are not in, they've gone shopping or working. If, uh, if the questionnaire is sent by email, it may be go straight to the spam box and no response. If it's sent by email, it may go into the inbox, but it may may not be responded to either. People don't have time, or there's too much, uh, there are too many people looking for information. So non-response is a problem. Then there's misunderstanding and recording errors. Uh, that's why it's a good idea when interviewing sometimes to repeat what the respondent has said so that there is no misunderstanding. It's clear what's, what's been meant. But sometimes there might be misunderstanding in the response and it's recorded wrongly. 
the interviewer may have errors as well. Uh, the interviewer might um, misread the question or pose the question in a manner which leads the respondent to give a particular answer. Uh, body language may creep into it and in asking the question the respondent is inclined to give a certain response because of the way the question was posed. And these are all interview problems. Let's look at telephone interviews. Well, the types of telephone interviews, well, um, there could be computer-assisted telephone interviewing. Computer-assisted means the person asking the questions is reading the questions off a, off a monitor and the answers are streaming the, uh, the next set of questions according to the answers. So uh, it's, it's going off on different branches depending on where the answers were was taking the, the uh, interview. A computer administered telephone survey uh, it it's happening more and more and companies seem to like it but there is evidence of increasing respondent resistance to this people do not like to have their evening meal interrupted by a survey on a telephone and they don't like their numbers generated randomly and called randomly cold calling it's as, as it's called um, they may have other things to do so it's it's not universally welcomed and gets some bad press the problems well sometimes as I said respondents may be reluctant to participate uh, they don't want to be just telephoned and take up their time in this manner so there is a high refusal rate um, which is inefficient it's an inefficient use of uh, resources on the part of the company but it's just generally annoying to a lot of people so this type of interview has to be carefully considered and carefully administered let's look at self-administered um, interviews which may sound a, a little complex but let's look at the types well it could be delivered but self-administered so the questions let's say could be delivered to the house and the people in the house or the person in the house would complete the document would tick the boxes or write small comments uh, that's a possibility so they can do it in their own time for example it could be a survey in the mail a survey in the post now there are disadvantages um, it's a large non-response rate people get it and see it as more spam coming through the door um, so it gets binned straight away um, there would be a large non-response error people don't necessarily fill out uh, everything that comes through the door and the other disadvantage is cannot obtain detailed or large amounts of information uh, there's no opportunity to follow up on any of the answers and the context in which the uh, respondent was answering the questions cannot be taken into account the respondent may be rushed or the respondent may be in a bad mood or the respondent may feel depressed about something or there's a whole series of situations that could colour or influence the type of answers that are being given now ways to improve male response well the most obvious one is to reduce the length of the uh, survey short surveys are more popular people don't want to spend a lot of time um, answering long surveys 
survey could be sponsored. Um, there may be advantages to the respondent in completing the survey, such as free goods or entry into a, a draw for a, for a car or a foreign holiday or something. So it could be sponsored in some way. Certainly they would need to have return envelopes. They're not going to pay for doing this. So return envelopes must be supplied, together with postage, of course. Um, ideally, the documentation should be personalised. It should They should feel it's coming to them, not a dear sir, dear madam. It should be dear Mr. Whoever, dear Mrs. Whoever. Um, it should be personalised. And there are ways of using computer technology to do this, but care must be taken because if it's obvious that this was generated by a computer, then that may alienate the respondents as well. They do like people to deal with them. Anonymity, well, uh, anonymity means that they can respond and be sure that anything they say will not be held against them. They can be honest. Uh, if they don't like the product, they can say it. And their answers will be merged into all the other answers and will be taken out as, a, as an average response. But there's no repercussions for them from telling what they see to be the truth. The colour and size and reproduction of the documents that are sent. Uh, these attributes, size, colour, reproduction, really determine how professional the, the information is or, or the information that's required. Uh, if the literature so associated with the survey is very colourful and extra large print and desktop published in a very uh, ornate fashion, then it may suggest that the information required is light-hearted. Uh, the respondents don't have to think too much about it. If it's more business-like, then the respondent may take it more seriously. There may be money incentives in completing a survey. Um, some people get paid or they may receive bonus points or they may um, be entered into raffles, as I said earlier, or be given some sort of incentive to, to respond. And there are many um, survey companies who have uh, selected cl uh, clients and selected respondents, uh, uh, a complete sampling frame perhaps, drawn up and some of the respondents do this almost professionally to get, to get some money. It's important that there are deadline dates because otherwise it may simply drag on and on. But the deadline dates should be realistic. Respondents can't always sit down immediately and respond. So deadline dates are important, but they must be realistic. And if they're too far into the future, then the, the whole exercise may be forgotten about and there'll be no response. A cover letter is always a good idea. It explains who the company is, what the purpose of the survey is, uh, why the person has been selected and how the person was selected and why that person's opinions are important. So a cover letter is always a good idea. Now it is possible to outsource survey services um, and research firms may be used for this purpose. 
for a start they have a, a centralised location for interviewing and they will of course have many years of experience and examples of good practice but just taking one point at a time uh, they will have a centralised location for interviewing they will have a place where it's been done in the past and the ambience or the surroundings in which the interview may take place may have been uh, carefully thought out and provided by the company. They may have focus group facilities which other companies don't have, trained facilitators and um, good equipment, efficient uh, way of organising group interaction and group responses and looking at the outcomes in a very analytical and very clear fashion all derived from their experience of doing this in a specialised context. So they will have trained staff with experience and that is important. They could also have data processing and statistical analysis capabilities that many companies may not have. Having collected the data it's important that it's analysed and many companies may not have the facilities to do that or the expertise to do it. So outsourcing it may be a good idea. Uh, they may have personnel with experience in specialised software or uh, with academic qualifications in say statistics which would be important in interpreting the data. Um, they may have access to, to some data that others may not have access to. Um, they may have uh, purchased access to specialised data relating to uh, specific markets. They may have contributed to Mintel reports for example or they may have an expertise in using government statistics in uh, certain areas and perhaps other companies would have access to it but it would be a very costly exercise. It would be very difficult for them to do so that outsourcing it would be a good idea. And of course they may also have panels panels in the sense of uh, uh, a list of people who are willing to cooperate in surveys and these panels may be very large, it may be a very large database of people and they can draw from these and that gets rid of the non-response error and they also get good responses from the people that they have on their panels because they have been carefully selected over a long period of time. Now, I should say it was uh, quite a long talk on uh, surveying and interviewing and so on. So I expect you to have stopped the video many times, had a break, uh, done some research, made your own notes, padded out your own notes. Uh, it is an important topic because it's a valuable source of primary information, primary data that companies do use. However, let's leave it for there now and thank you for watching.